Hi, this is Josh with Retro TV One Tech, and today I'm going to be showing you how to add a joystick to a Windows 95 or MS DOS laptop, or at least one way to do it. Also, I'm going to be showing you why I have two laptops sitting here now, and uh, a lot more about these awesome machines. First of all, we talked about laptops a little bit as one of the best ways to play MS DOS games without taking up a lot of space in your house because these laptops, even though they're a lot bigger than a modern laptop, they're still way smaller than a desktop system with a big tower or even you know just a flat machine and, and a huge CRT monitor, which would be required to play DOS games or Windows 95 games even. So these laptops are way smaller, they're easy to put away, um, and generally if you get one for Windows 95, they have sound cards and all kinds of great stuff that allow you to play some of these great games. But one of the things I found out really, really early was that it's very, very difficult to connect a joystick or a cool gamepad like this Microsoft Sidewinder I picked up um, to one of these laptops because these laptops don't come standard with these 15 pin joystick ports. I'll pick this up again and show you. This is the standard MS-DOS era and all the way up to like Windows 98 before USB DOS joystick port. And so you've got that 15 pin joystick port and uh, it's very, very difficult to get one of those hooked up to one of these laptops because as you can see, there isn't a port for it on the back. You know, you've got your, um, you've got your parallel port here, you've got a serial port, the BGA connector, of course, for an external monitor. And then you've got your power adapter, you know, PS2 mouse, all kinds of things. And this is the, the dock connector, this right here. So uh, the dock connector actually is a secret or one way to add an MS-DOS joystick to a laptop here like this, or any kind of a joystick for that matter that has a 15 pin connector. By the way, this laptop doesn't even have USB at all. Of course, some of the Windows 98 machines do and USB started to become a thing, but DOS won't recognize USB anyway, so that's kind of a moot point. So, one way, like I said, to get a 15 pin joystick working on a laptop so that you're not just using the keyboard all the time is to get the docking station or what we call a port replicator. And I was super, super lucky to find one of these. Uh, this is my Toshiba five, uh, Tecra 500 CDT laptop. I actually had to get a second one because it came with this port replicator. So I found a listing on eBay. I was just searching for the name of the laptop, Toshi Toshiba Tecra 500 CDT. And I've done videos about that before. It's one of the best Windows 95 and DOS gaming laptops in my opinion. And I found the port replicator for it. These are very, very hard to find, or as we say in the community, unobtainium, I guess is, uh, is the way that's put. But they're very, very hard to find. And um, I found this one, was really, really excited to find it. But as you can see here, it has a 15 pin game port. And so it will work natively uh, either in DOS or in Windows 95 if I just connect it to the dock and everything should just work great. So that's one way to add a joystick to a gaming laptop like this. And we'll show you how that works. Um, this laptop is the one that I got new. You can see it's very similar to the other one. Uh, we'll show you some differences with those. This one supposedly doesn't work. It has some kind of a hard disk issue. Probably just have to replace that with compact flash. So we'll check that out here in just a couple minutes and see if I can get it to boot maybe using a DOS disk. And you can see both of these computers did come with the um, external floppy drives, but they actually can be plugged in in a modular fashion where the CD drive is right here, which is pretty cool. You can swap the CD drive to external, put the floppy inside the bay, or how it is now with the floppy external and the CD internal. I found the CD doesn't work very well external, so that's why I've kept them internal. So anyway, uh, another thing is I don't have an AC adapter for this port replicator, so I bought this on Amazon. It's basically a mixed voltage DC adapter, and I was careful to make sure all the specs match. So this should work. The eBay seller is supposed to be sending me the official power adapter for this. Hopefully it works too, but this should work because all the specs are the same. So let's get started checking out these awesome laptops. And by the way, I said there was more than one way to add a 15 pin game port joystick to a laptop. This is the other one. I found this recently on eBay. It wasn't cheap, but this is very, very rare. This is a New Media Basics joystick adapter or game port adapter. And as you can see right here, it has a 15 pin joystick port right on the end of it. And it is a PCMCIA card that fits right in a Windows 95 DOS era laptop. Um, the problem with this so far is I haven't been able to get it to work on Windows 95. I kind of did that off video because uh, there was a lot of drivers and things to mess with. And my original Toshiba Tecra uh, would work with this a little bit. I don't have a DOS type joystick to try it with. It would work in DOS, 
to a certain point, but it wouldn't work in Windows 95 at all because it kept uh, refusing the drivers that I downloaded. So I tried several drivers. Windows 95 kept looking at it and saying, this is not a driver for this. This is not a driver for this. So I don't know. I may try a different operating system. I may try Windows 98 when I start using Compact Flash on these. But either way, I wanted to show this. This will be, I'll do a whole video on this because these are pretty iconic uh, in the retro community. They're really hard to find. And I was super, super excited to find this on eBay. But this is another way to install a joystick. I just haven't gotten it working yet. But the port replicator should work. So stay with us and let's see if we can get it working. Okay, first things first, this is the new Toshiba Tecra 500 CDT that I bought along with the port replicator and it supposedly doesn't boot. Uh, so I'm gonna see what it does first, just plugging it in and turning it on. Of course, the, uh, you know, the batteries are long dead on these. My other uh, Tecra doesn't have a battery even installed. Uh, so it has all kinds of issues with that but this one actually has a battery and you can see the orange charging light i don't think it actually charges but let's see what it does when it tries to boot and this is just without the port replicator this is just turning it on to see what happens and then i'll put i have a windows 95 boot disk and a dos boost boot disk that we can try and see what happens so it looks like it's got power just saw the video bios flash on there hdc error so this is what they said in the eBay listing as well. So HDC error, I'm wondering if that means hard disk controller error. I don't know. So that maybe to me means that the hard disk is bad, but then it's giving me an option to hit the F1 key. So let's see what happens when I hit F1. It should take me into the CMOS. Okay, it does. So I'm not going to change anything right now. Um, and it does say the boot priority is set on floppy disk first, so I should be able, if I connect the external floppy, to boot this, at least into DOS, and see if it works. So this one has more RAM than my other one, too. This one's got 64 megs of RAM. You can see up at the top, 65,000 kilobytes of RAM there. So um, this one actually is a little bit more deluxe, and my other one has 32. So let me go ahead and escape out of here and see what it does after that. Exit without saving, yes. Uh, so nothing maybe that's interesting okay so that may be oh wait okay it's it's resetting oh it's doing a memory test just got to give it time we got to be patient with these older computers copyright 1996 all right let's see what it does now so it still gives the hdc error which to me is a hard drive error um I could hear it kind of trying to do something. The hard drive was clicking there. Wait. Insert system disk and drive. Okay. So let's see if we can get my Windows 95 boot disk in here. So that's the only thing stopping it, I think, is the hard drive. That's cool. That's an easy fix. All right. I've connected up the external floppy here. I put a disk in it. I don't know if I have to reset the computer to get this floppy to be recognized. You can see it plugs in here in the side. If I have to, I can put it down in the bay uh, right where the CD-ROM is. But let's just see if it'll do something. trying okay so I'm not probably gonna have to reset the system let me just try the old-fashioned control alt delete here real quick okay so let's see if it'll see if it'll notice the uh, floppy now I may have to turn it off and back on and that's fine all right let's try turning it off and back on right that's the classic solution all right we've got it off and let's boot it back up and see if we can get this to recognize the floppy here. Oh, well, that was a much faster memory test that time because I kept it plugged in. It was a hard drive error. I don't want to spend too long on this because the whole point was to check the port replicator, but it is strange to me uh, that the floppy isn't reading. It's not even trying to read the floppy, so that's interesting to me. Let me check a couple other things here. Okay, I just switched the floppy drives, and it seems to be trying to boot now. So I have a floppy drive with the other computer. Oh, look at that, starting Windows 95. So this is the Windows 95 boot disk. So there must be something wrong with that other floppy drive. Well, at least I have one working one. That's good. Wow, look at that. It works. And of course, all I'm going to be able to do, I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to be able to get to a C drive from here. Yes, it's not even, that's not even a thing. But I can at least see the directory on the disk. Okay, so this is a totally working computer. It's just the hard drive that's bad, so that's cool. I'm not gonna do that. That'll be a separate video, uh, but it is kind of cool to see that it does boot. 
and it does in fact work. CPU is good, memory must be good, everything is working, so good. All right, I'm gonna switch computers out, uh, get the port replicator installed uh, with this laptop over here, the one that does boot, um, get everything switched around, and we're gonna try that Sidewinder joystick and see if we can get it installed and working in Windows 95 with this port replicator. I wanted to try one more thing before we switch this over. I just unplugged it. I just want to see if the battery retained any charge uh, from when I had it plugged in. It was only plugged in for a couple minutes, but let's just see. Oh, wow. It didn't do anything, but the battery had a little bit of charge. I saw a green light flash. That's kind of, uh, that's kind of incredible. So yeah, not enough to charge it or boot it. But anyway, maybe if I charged it like for a few hours, it might work for 10 minutes. Who knows? But that's pretty awesome. All right, so I wanted to show everybody how this connects. It's pretty interesting. First of all, it is broken. You can see there's a peg on the left side over there that's not present on the right side. So here's this peg and it's actually broken, but it still works. The main connector part is fine. But basically there are two holes under the laptop and you put them in there and then it kind of pulls it. Let me pull this up and it kind of pulls it back into the connector. So that's kind of cool the way that works. It's pretty, pretty sturdy. I'm actually kind of surprised it broke. It must have been hit with some force at some point. All right, so I'll try and get this connected up here. I'm just, I'm just gonna get this side on the hole. And just kind of gently pull that on there. There we go. Perfect. Not the, not the most solid thing in the world there, but hey, you know, it's like, uh, it's like 20 some years old. So what, 96, I guess that would be like uh, about 27 years old here. So, all right, so that's all connected up and this is my newer machine here. So I'm gonna get this uh, DC adapter figured out here. I gotta get it to 15 volts. Uh, I've already checked the positive negative here. If you look here, this shows center positive and the port replicator also shows center positive. So that's the most important thing, but also the voltage, it requires 15 volts. So I'll set this to 15 volts. The other thing you have to check is the amperage. And you can see this says three amps max. Uh, the port replicator requires 2.7 amps, so that is okay. And one thing I read online was it's okay if it actually, the power supply is rated for more amps because the system will only draw the amount of amps that it needs and this, the, the uh, adapter will not like force three amps into the system when it doesn't need that much. So that, that was something else I, learned so you can't get a power supply that's too small or it'll overheat trying to supply more power than it's able to do so this should work perfectly i also have a tip here that is uh, compatible with the back of the port replicator so let's give this a shot and by the way it is strange to me that the uh the regular connection power connection on the laptop is one of these and actually the power supply and transformer are inside the laptop itself which obviously isn't how it works anymore and, and didn't work that way for very long at all because they wanted to save space inside the machine and have the power supply be separate but it is kind of cool that you know the, in these older laptops you're actually carrying around your power supply and you just need a cord but for the port replicator i guess they figured it would be okay to have the box here and of course this is not what the original looked like but it would be a transformer similar to this that plugged in you know to ac on one side and dc on the other side so it is interesting they take two separate power supplies i'm kind of surprised they didn't find a way to put the power supply in the port replicator and just have it hook up to this no matter what but that was uh, what toshiba decided to do for whatever reason so interesting all right so i've got this going and this doesn't have a very long cord on it so i'm kind of holding it up here but it's very touchy you can see uh adjusting the voltage here i don't have it plugged in yet just have it uh, separate, so I wanted to get the voltage perfect before I plugged it in, but I just wanted to show you how touchy it is. There we go, Oop, I went too far. You can see, uh, I probably should have left it alone, but it's just, it's very difficult. Just the slightest little movement. <laughs> it's like uh, the most obnoxious video game ever. I'll get it eventually. Let me go down just a little bit more and come back up. <laughs> Now it'll come up just a little. There it is, right there, don't touch it. <laughs> All right, let's plug it into the computer and see if it works. All right, we've got everything plugged in. The voltage is correct. And we're gonna go ahead and give it a shot. Let's see if we've got power. Looks like we do. Looks like it's trying to come on. Here comes the fan. Okay, 
Now it does that every time I unplug it because the battery's bad, so I have to go into the uh, CMOS here, escape, yes, and then after that it will actually boot. See, it looks like we're good. I did my homework on the power supply and it seems to have uh, worked okay. There we go. You can see the memory test. Again, this is the first one I got and it's got 32 megs of RAM. Pretty incredible that this used to be a ton of RAM back in 1996. I should be able to boot right into Windows 95. And for now, the hard drive on this one works. Now, I did buy a uh, compact flash adapter for this one, and I also bought a PCMCIA compact flash, flash adapter, so I actually can transfer some stuff off the regular hard drive onto the compact flash, but also install the compact flash into the system because I got the IDE connector for it as well. So I should be able to uh, have that be the main boot disk on the computer uh, eventually. So that'll be good. And if you remember from the previous video, this is the uh, laptop that was originally at Nike. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it had the Nike logo when you go to the uh, system properties dialog. So anyway, remember when Windows 95 used to take this long to boot up? <laughs> All right, I have my uh, Microsoft networking on there because I was trying to do some sharing with my other Windows 10 PC. That didn't work, but I ended up using FTP with FileZilla, and you can see my other video for that to see how I got that working. Um, but I used that to also transfer the... Uh... Oh, wow, look at that. An ISA, an ISA bridge. That's interesting. I definitely don't have any software disks for that, so we're probably going to have to cancel out of that for now. But uh, that's how I got these Sidewinder drivers installed was what I was going to say. Um, or at least got them copied over, was on the FileZilla FTP. So um, so that's interesting. There's an ISA bridge there with uh, some of the connectors uh, on the back of the system. So hopefully the game port still works. Uh, I may have to find some Toshiba device drivers for that, if not. Anyway, at least we can give it a try. Ooh, joystick. Okay, so they did have that. Uh, the DirectX driver's disk is now required. That's fun. Okay. So we'll figure out all that stuff here in just a second. Okay, so since I have the Sidewinder joystick driver, I think I should be okay here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel for now. Yeah, it's not installed, but at least it'll boot and then we can mess with it. Don't you love these eraser <laughs> mouse configurations here? Boy, there's a lot of unknown devices here. Okay, so that's a PC MCIA controller. Got yeah, these little eraser tip mice. MPU 401, that's fun. Oh, that's because of the, um, that's cool. That's because of the uh, game port. So you can hook a MIDI controller into there. I should get my Roland MT32, right? <laughs> all right, so I'm going to skip that for now as well. So all that, so the game port definitely is working. I just need to, because you started a computer with a new configuration, Windows must make some adjustments. That was the thing on Windows 95 was that they didn't have all the drivers included you had to have them from the manufacturer and of course a lot of that was because when windows was created um all those drivers weren't available you know and some of the hardware wasn't available as well and there was no online presence for drivers at least not when windows 95 first came out that that did come later uh, but they took forever to download over a dial-up connection so all these things that we take for granted now where you know if your computer can't find a driver in windows 10 or 11 it just searches the internet and finds one there's no disk or anything it just works most of the time um so just kind of interesting now how we you know take it for granted and back in the windows 95 era it was all about drivers 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 figuring out all that so anyway i'll let this finish this thing and i'll come back when it boots up all right so it's almost done here this is taking a little while so it's interesting because even though i didn't give it the drivers it wanted. Uh, it still took a long time to reconfigure some things with this docking station. So I'm looking online to see if I can find uh, the drivers I need. Uh, I have a few drivers already downloaded. The Crystal Audio System that's in this computer, I have a driver disk for that if I need it, um, and a few other things. I've got the Sidewinder driver, but I really just want to try the Sidewinder driver first and see if that will install what I need. And if not, then I'll go ahead and install um, the... Uh, crystal drivers that it needs. Windows has successfully completed a setup for your new configuration called Dock 1. That's fun. So it's actually called it a separate configuration uh, as opposed to undocked. 
Yeah, that Windows 95 startup sound, even though I had it really soft. Oh, interesting. So it changed the display resolution, so I may have to figure that out. I wonder if it's somehow done that because it thinks you might be connected to a VGA monitor, and so it's changed the resolution to match. So let's check that real quick. Let's go into um, control panel. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on with that. It used to be, I don't think you can do this anymore. It used to be you could, uh, used to be you could do it. I need another mouse to me. Used to be you could just right click on the desktop. I don't think you can do that in this version. I think that's Windows 95. So let's go into the Windows 98. I mean, let's go into display. I'm getting everything wrong today. Okay, let's see, settings, 640 by 40. So let's see if we can go into uh, 800 by 600. Is that the what we want here? Let's try that. Let's see if that works. Oh, that'll work. Cool, yes please. Oh, and it says 16 colors. We don't want 16 colors. Let's go ahead and go um, high color maybe. Is that how it works? Let's see if that, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to restart right now. Okay, I'm going to go into um, the uh, system properties here and see if we can figure out what's going on with these drivers. See if any of them actually did install. Device manager. Okay, so what happens with these, if you remember, is it shows you the things that are not configured correctly. So here's the joystick. Okay. Drivers are not installed correctly. Okay, so no drivers. So we definitely need to do that at some point. So let me see, though, first of all. Before I do that, if I install the Microsoft Sidewinder drivers, if that will do it. So, I actually copied these over into this shared folder that I have here. I used FileZilla FTP program here. So let's see if this will work. Yeah, see it's got a Direct3D DLL there. That's what I'm wondering if will actually give me what I need here. Something peaceful about hearing that old hard drive clicking away. All right, just as I feared, not gonna make you read all that, but basically it didn't, didn't detect a game port. So obviously we don't have USB here. Uh, so we'll definitely Definitely need to try this again. So I'm gonna go ahead and just say no. We'll run the setup again and I'll figure out what driver file I need to make this work. All right, so I'm back after downloading a ton of different drivers to see if we can get this to work. So let me pull the computer a little bit closer here. So I downloaded some of the uh, crystal drivers for the sound card and the game port that I've got in here. So hopefully, we can get that to work. I also removed all the hardware, at least the new hardware, uh, before I shut down Windows, and that way it will hopefully auto-detect it as it logs on here, and uh, hopefully that'll help make the process a little easier. I've got all the right drivers on the hard drive, so we'll try all of those files and see if they work. So, wish me luck. We hope for no blue screen messages like my shirt. Probably saw earlier that's a Windows 95 blue screen, by the way. The blue screen of death, the infamous blue screen of death. Okay, so the PCI standard ISA bridge. I don't have that one. I gotta figure out what that is and how to find it. I kinda know what it is, but I don't know how to find it. So we're gonna cancel it. Oh, what's this next? Okay, joystick though, we're gonna do that hopefully okay there we go now uh, I've got DirectX but I think actually more than that I should be able to go in here and browse for through the directory here and find the right driver it wasn't in that one with the three discs I know it might be right here there it is right there okay so let's see if it accepts that all right come on Windows be happy with the driver I gave you all right, let's give this a try and give it a little zoom just so you can see it a little better. MS Analog. 
see it's looking for more drivers than what I have. I wonder if I installed DirectX. I wonder if that'll do it. I did actually get a DirectX disk. Um, so I don't think that file is in any of these folders. All right, so let's cancel out of that for now. I think I saw some of those there. Okay, there's MS Joystick. So just all these different files. I'm not gonna worry about the MPU right now. Yes, I understand that. Sorry about the little bit of banding or more effect on the monitor. I've tried to kind of mitigate it by turning the camera sideways a little bit, but pretty impossible to completely avoid it from what I've seen. All right, so let's see if it actually installed that game port driver, even though I was missing the analog file there. I can probably find that. I actually got DirectX 7 and downloaded that so I can install that separately if I need to. But let's look under system and see if the game port's happy. And then maybe if I can install the Sidewinder drivers, it seems to be happy. All right, so let's try the Sidewinders. I'm gonna actually um, plug this joystick in. By the way, who remembers these? This cool. These are so cool. And one of the things about this that a lot of people don't know or remember is that right here is actually, on the back, is actually a pass-through uh, for another joystick. So you could plug in a second joystick uh, to the same game port. A lot of you know computers only had one game port, especially if it was on a sound card. So you could plug in two joysticks to the same game port as a pass-through here. So that's fun. All right, the joystick is plugged in. As you can see with the light on there, it does have power. So that's a good thing. So let's see now if I put the joystick off to the side there for a second. Let me see if I can install the Sidewinder software and see what happens with that. It might install its own analog driver anyway, so it is missing that one thing, but we'll see uh, what happens. And if not, I'll, I'll figure that out. Here's the Sidewinder driver. Hopefully it doesn't have to copy everything up. Oh, it's going to do it again. All right, so it's done copying files. It's trying to update the system. Since the game port is installed now, it should be okay. I'm not sure if it needs the analog because there's nothing analog about this Sidewinder joystick, so we'll see. All right, so we skipped ahead a little bit, and it looks like it's happy. So that's good, and I see a picture of the joystick on there, so let's see if we can get this working. Uh, before installing it, you'll need to install or update your system with DirectX. Okay, so let's see what it does here. Oh. Okay, well maybe it will do that. That analog joystick was part of DirectX anyway, so okay. Maybe it's already in here, so that's fine. Let's see what's going on here. Oops, Nike. Because <laughs> this computer, you know, again, is uh, from the Nike company, so that's pretty cool. It's like a company laptop. Wonder what tennis shoes were designed or sold on this computer. So, all right, so let's see what happens. Pretty cool little splash screen there. That's very Windows 95. Wow, it just copied a bunch of game configuration files, so that's pretty cool. I just kind of saw that. I don't know if you could see that as well. And it's still working. Good thing I have plenty of hard drive space on this computer. I'm sure at some point, since I've had these Sidewinder joysticks before, that I used this install program or something similar to it, but of course it's been 20 some years ago and I don't remember, definitely don't remember it being this intense for a joystick, but this should work with DOS if I run the games from within Windows 95 here. So we'll see what happens on that. If nothing else, at least we can see if it's working by using the uh, testing utility to see if it's actually detecting input from the joystick. So at the very least, we'll be able to see if it's working or not. And you can kind of see here a pretty uh, good indication of how much work it takes to get a joystick working 
on Windows 95 and DOS. Now, if I had like a Gravis gamepad or a simple analog joystick, it probably would have been way easier. But um, especially with Windows 95, just none of the drivers are included. So, okay, so I guess we are going to restart Windows. Ta da! Be right back. Okay, it's going to find that there isn't. Oh, there we go. Maybe it found it? Okay. I don't know. All right, let's see what happens here. So we should be able to... Let's see if it installed a Sidewinder application here in the start menu. Microsoft Hardware. I'm still not very good at this mouse. Sidewinder Central. Let's go in here and see what happens. Okay. Let's get a Sidewinder control panel. And here we go. Let's see what advanced is. Okay. It says that it's connected, so that's a good sign. It shows that it's there. Standard game port. Okay, so let's see if I can do anything with it. Ah, here we go. Press the button that you want to test. So here we go. Yay, it's working! You can see the arrow there. Oh my goodness, it's the first time I've gotten a joystick to work on this laptop. I'm so excited. Wow. <laughs> like, literally hours and hours and hours trying to get this little uh, game card working because the driver wouldn't work on Windows 95. And finally, with the port replicator, we are good with the Sidewinder. Several drivers and several minutes later, everything is working. Yay! Okay, so we don't need any profiles right now. I'm not going to worry about that. But let's see if we can get it working in a DOS game because, you know, it's like the whole point of what we're doing here is to play some fun games. So let's try Commander Keen. That's always fun with the joystick. So here we go, Commander Keen. Well, let me, let me load it from the DOS prompt. I'm not sure if it really matters or not, but let's go to the DOS prompt here. For. Let's see if we can get it going here. Oh, it's showing a joystick, so that's promising. Again, sorry about all the, the banding effect here, but let's see if we can get the joystick working. That would make me so happy. All right, so here we go. Let's see. Let's go to configure. Let's go to joystick. Okay, so let's try this. Press joystick to the upper left and press button one. Oh my gosh, it's working. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, press button two using joystick one. So we got button one and button two. This has got way more buttons than what I need, but that is awesome. So because I'm in Windows 95, it works. So let's try new game here. Let's see what we got. I'm gonna try and keep the joystick in view here. It's kind of hard with the camera, but you get the point. Oh, uh, listen to that awesome old Sound Blaster and AdLib soundtrack. Uh, yep, it's working. Look at that. <laughs> oh, wow. What's cool about it is, too, the diagonal works, too. So I can see I can push the gamepad diagonal. That is absolutely perfect. Oh, my goodness. Wow. It only took a port replicator. Now, see, if I'd had a desktop computer, that's the one drawback, like I said earlier, to laptops. If you have a laptop... You've got to find a way to get that game port working. Uh, whereas if you had a desktop, you'd just go on eBay and buy a game port card or a sound or you know a Sound Blaster compatible something uh, for pretty cheap. The Sound Blasters aren't cheap; the clones are, um, and a lot of them have game ports. Or you can find yourself a uh, just a game port card, like an old craft game port card for like fifteen dollars or less. So that's pretty cool. Hello, smiley face guy. <laughs> that's so much fun. So yeah, that is working perfectly. I want to try one more thing after I beat this level. Wow. <laughs> I don't know why that's so exciting, but it's just, it's really hard to play this, you know, with the keyboard down here when you're doing all this stuff. Now, of course, the keyboard doesn't work now because I've got it configured to do the joystick, but that is so cool. Now, probably it was blurry while I was playing with this, so I apologize, you got a little bit of blur there, but you can you can see, so anyway. 
the screen is not super clear with all the banding and stuff. It's funny, I've seen other YouTubers struggle with this too, and, and uh, it's just really difficult to get right. But anyway, let's go. Okay. Wow, that is so exciting. <laughs> Been trying to get that to work for so long. All right, so let me go over here and I'm going to I'm going to load up test drive, test drive three. Let's see if we can get that working uh, with the joystick. And that one I don't know. It doesn't have like a joystick option. Let me see if there's a setup program on here. Now let's see setup. Uh, I think this is just like installation really. But let's do ad lib as Okay, that didn't really help. It's not what I was looking for, but let's see if it works. Yeah, now we're jamming. And for whatever reason on this one, it doesn't take up the whole screen because it's at 640 by 480. I think there's a program I can install that'll stretch it, so we'll figure that out here in just a minute. Let's see if this just automatically works. So this doesn't work, and I gotta figure this out. There's gotta be a way to like enable the joystick, but there's no... Huh. It acts like it wants to use the joystick, but it's not. Let's see. So of course, it works with the keyboard, no problem, but no joystick on this one. So I have to do some research on how to get the joystick working with Test Drive 3. Alright, so no worries. I'm just not sure why that doesn't work or what it takes to get it working. Um, and I wasn't able to get that working on any. Let me get out of here. Wasn't able to get that working on um, any of my setups, so I'm not really sure what's going on with that. Let's see. I bet I can get it working on Wolfenstein here. All right, Wolf 3D. Okay, it does detect the joystick. See, so I wonder if Test Drive just needs something else to to get the. Uh, Get the joystick working. Yes, not share where we get it. Thank you so much. Okay, let's enable the joystick. I wonder if it will. Can we try it? Can we call it a Gravis gamepad? Let's see if we can customize the controls. Okay. So run would be button three. Oh, it does work. Okay, so let's let's see. Let's go open. Ooh, okay. Let me do fire as button zero. Run can be button one. What about strafe? Okay, so it's kind of hard to figure out kind of which buttons are which here. I definitely want that to be fire. There we go. Okay, so I kind of it, it uses these buttons. It kind of mimics a Gravis gamepad here. All right, so let's see what we can do here. Let's get out of there. Let's see if it saved that. Yeah, it looks like it did. Let's see what we can do here. All right, so let's go to new game. It's cool that I can do all of the. Uh, like, can I play daddy? Because you know, I'm out of practice. All right, here we go. Oh yes, look at that. It's working. Woohoo! Alright. <laughs> That's so awesome. I don't remember which button. Okay, not that button. There we go. That's the open button. Alright, cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Hello. Let's go out here. That's so cool. Oh my goodness. Oh, there's somebody mad at me. Okay. Yeah. That works so well, oh my goodness. So much easier to play these games with a joystick. Wow. Even though I'm still not very good at it. All right, cool. Wow, so that's all it took. Of course, I never got the new Media Basics game port working, but maybe in a different installation of Windows. It seemed like there was some kind of a issue with that, with the configuration of it. So I don't think I have any other programs. Um, I do have Tyrion. I don't know about that one. Let's try that real quick, just for fun. 
All right, so I found Tyrion here. I think there's a setup, so let's see what we can do with setup here. Hello. Uh, music will be FM sound. Uh, let's go to Sound Blaster. Right? Should be fine. It's a Pentium. We want the music up, man. Let's this. Okay. What about the joystick? I guess it maybe that one. Maybe this one doesn't take a joystick. Let's see. Windows has been detected. Funky 2.1 mode. We suggest you run Tyrion and DOS mode for performance reasons, but there should be no reason why it wouldn't otherwise work. Okay. Well, let's just see what happens. Wow, that's pretty cool. I remember playing this game very vaguely. I've seen it on other people's videos and really gotten kind of excited about it. Didn't seem like there was any way to load a joystick. Oh, but it's working. It's just automatically working. That's cool. I like that. Let's just play. Here we go. Such great music. Those graphics, oh my goodness, it's so good. We'll figure out how to get it full screen, but that is just awesome. Let me zoom in a little bit for you so you can see better as I die here. <laughs> warning, warning. You mean I can't adjust my monitor? That is such great sound. Wow. I don't think I played this very much when I was a kid. Like, I kind of remember it, but I don't think I... I kind of remember a game called Raptor more than this, and I think that was by Apogee, and this is Epic, so different companies. Yep, this isn't easy. I put easy mode, but it doesn't seem easy. I'm really way out of practice. And I'm totally going to die here in about, like, three seconds, but... Be cool if I could find some health or something. Such great graphics. All right, well that's enough of that. Oh, there we go. Listen to that. Well, after all that, I'm really surprised it actually worked, especially considering the hodgepodge way I installed those drivers, just kind of one file at a time. The fact that I'm using this uh, kind of multi-voltage DC adapter, which is just barely holding 15 volts here, uh, the port replicator you know, with the broken peg, and then the Sidewinder joystick, which isn't 100% compatible with DOS games uh, all the time unless you're running them from Windows, from what I understand. There is a driver for that, by the way. I know maybe uh, some people have seen that. There's a Sidewinder driver that works in DOS, supposedly. I haven't tried that yet. But anyway, all that said, and it worked, that is just super, super exciting. Um, wow. A lot of work to get that going, but uh, so much fun when you get to play the games and get to feel that awesome control. This Sidewinder is actually one of my favorite joysticks ever because it's just comfortable in the hand. kind of reminds me of the uh, Switch Pro Controller. So I know it doesn't quite look like it, but it just, you know, the design is fairly similar. Obviously, there's no analog sticks on the uh, Sidewinder, but it's just kind of reminiscent of that. And it just feels really good in the hand. Uh, it's very ergonomically designed, and it's just really fun to play with. The D-pad is really nice as well. It's not like a Nintendo D-pad. It actually does have uh, all eight directions. You can do the diagonal there, which actually is even better than the standard plus sign D-pad. So anyway, lots of fun with joysticks, and uh, you don't realize that you have a laptop with uh, no joystick port, 
how much more difficult it is to play some of these old DOS games with just the keyboard. Now, some work really well with the keyboard or with the mouse, you know, if you're playing Doom or something, or even Wolfenstein with the mouse, that works really well. But a lot of these games like Commander Keen, uh, even Tyrion, you know, it's just a lot easier when you're using a joystick. All right, well, that's all for now for this laptop joystick extravaganza. Hope you enjoyed the video. I know it was a little crazy and uh, kind of a little meandering stream of consciousness as I work my way through some of those issues, but hopefully that helps somebody else uh, if you're trying to do something similar or trying to figure out how to get a joystick to work with your Windows 95 or MS-DOS laptop. Uh, definitely not an easy thing to do, but a lot of fun once you get it going. And I will have a separate video about this uh, new Media Basics game port card, which again is super rare and super excited to have found it, but I'm going to figure out a way to get this working on one of these laptops here and also of course get this other laptop over here working, hopefully replace the hard drive, uh, maybe with a compact flash, all that stuff, get it working and see how it uh, performs as well. So again, thank you for watching. Be sure you subscribe here to Retro TD One Tech. Uh, leave a comment, let me know if you've had a similar experience or just if you have a great memory of playing DOS or Windows 95 games uh, on your computers when you were growing up or maybe even recently. So thanks again for watching everybody. So for now, enjoy that tech and keep it retro.